Well, a very good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking at this hour. Prime Minister Modi heads to the United States for a state visit, tells the Wall Street Journal that there is unprecedented trust between both nations, also says that India is not neutral on the Russia-Ukraine war and that it stands on the side of peace. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is likely to meet Prime Minister Modi during his US visit. Renowned economists, authors and investors are also likely to call on the Prime Minister. Sources say US wants India to join the 14-nation grouping of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework aimed at countering China. Reserve Bank clarifies after its circular on compromise settlement with willful defaulters kicked up a storm, says that the circular does not dilute penal measures applicable to borrowers classified as willful defaulters or fraud, adds that compromise settlement is not available to borrowers as a matter of right. Indigo shares rise after placing a landmark 500 aircraft order with Airbus, the largest in civil aviation history. Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya said that the order is a testament to the potential of the Indian aviation sector. All trucks in India will need to have an air-conditioned driver's compartment from 2025, says the Union Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari, adds that the move is aimed at ensuring truck drivers are taken care of, even if it means an increase in cost. 20 syrups from 15 drug makers in India and Indonesia have been flagged by the WHO for allegedly containing toxic substances. WHO spokesperson refuses to reveal the names of manufacturers other than those for who have received product alerts citing ongoing investigations. Union government steps in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Health Minister says a five-member expert committee will visit the worst affected states. Families of victims and experts blame rising temperatures and humidity. The situation in ethnic violence marred Manipur remains tense. The Supreme Court refuses urgent hearing on a plea seeking army protection for Kuki tribals. Says it is purely a law and order issue. Hopes that courts will not be asked to deploy the army or central security forces. A surprise leadership change at China's largest e-commerce company, Alibaba. Eddie Wu will succeed Daniel Chang as the new CEO. Chang will now focus on the company's cloud intelligence business. Well, let's begin with the day's market action. The last street made a smart recovery in the second half of today's trading session to end at the day's high. Nifty and Sensex ended a quarter of a percent in the green. Mid-cap continued to outperform. The market capitalization of BSE companies rose to a record high of over 293 lakh crore rupees. Well, the big story tonight, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has begun his three-day visit to the United States. The Prime Minister is expected to land at the Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. tonight, where he will be welcomed by members of the Indian diaspora. As a part of his tight schedule, PM Modi is expected to meet top American CEOs, including Elon Musk. In an exclusive interview to Wall Street Journal, Prime Minister Modi said that ties between India and the United States are stronger and deeper than before, asserting that there is an unprecedented trust between the two leaders on the Russia-Ukraine war. The Prime Minister said that I quote here, some people say that we are neutral, but we are not neutral. We are on the side of peace. The world has full confidence that India's topmost priority is peace, end quote. The consolidation of India and USA's defense ties is one of the key highlights of the Prime Minister Modi's US visit. Jaka, Zaka Jacob gets us more on the proposed mega defense deals. Now, one big area of cooperation that has emerged in recent times between India and the United States is in critical emerging technologies. You saw how a few months ago, Jake Sullivan, the US NSA, had come to India and they had 
agreed upon something called ICET, the agreement on critical emerging technologies. Sullivan was there last week as well, firming up a big deal under ICET to be announced when the Prime Minister is going to be here this week uh, in New York as well as Washington, D.C. Now, why this has emerged as such a critical area of cooperation is because ever since COVID happened and the world started realizing two factors. One, how much it was dependent on China for its supply chains, particularly when it comes to high-end electronics, uh, smartphones, so on and so forth. And two, that more than 90% of the world's semiconductors were being manufactured by one company, the TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And because of the elevated level of rhetoric, including sometimes military rhetoric that we were seeing uh, from China as far as the Taiwan issue is concerned, suddenly it came to the fore in the last few years that if there were to be uh, some kind of a military confrontation between China and uh, Taiwan, and the United States will have to inevitably get involved, then one area that is going to be very badly affected, or at least has the risk of being badly affected, is that of semiconductors. So India, among other countries, has sensed this opportunity to try and diversify the manufacture of semiconductors. So we're given to understand a big deal is on the anvil as far as manufacture of semiconductors is concerned. Well, it is expected to be a packed schedule for the Prime Minister in U.S., including meetings with Elon Musk, economists, authors, diaspora members, among others. Parikshit Luthra is here joining us with more. Parikshit. Well, uh, the Prime Minister reaches John F. Kennedy Airport in New York tonight. He will have meetings with leading CEOs and thought leaders. Yes, Tesla CEO Elon Musk will be calling on the Prime Minister. Remember, Tesla officials have been holding meetings with Indian government officials in the run-up to Prime Minister's visit to the United States. Whether there will be any outcome as far as manufacturing in India goes, no one knows for now. The other economists and investors to call on the Prime Minister include uh, Professor Nicholas Talib, who's a renowned author of The Black Swan, a financial market analyst as well, Professor Robert Thurman, Padma Awardee and author on Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, Professor Paul Roma, Nobel, Nobel laureate and economist, Ray Dalio, American billionaire investor, very important uh, and well-known face in the United States. Uh, the Prime Minister will also be meeting American astrophysicist Neil Grass Tyson and Indian-American singer and Grammy Award winner Falguni Shah as well. On Wednesday, Prime Minister participates in the 9th International Yoga Day celebrations at the UN headquarters in New York. This will start at around 5.30 p.m. India time. He will then leave uh, for Washington, D.C. He will receive a ceremonial welcome at Joint Base Andrews in Washington. Thereafter, he attends an event on skilling for the future. And then the Prime Minister will hold three very important meetings uh, with the CEOs of Micron, Sanjay Mehrotra. Remember, Micron is considering an investment in India. H. Lawrence Culp of General Electric. Uh, Gary Dickerson of Applied Materials. And the final event for the day, and perhaps the most important, would be private meetings with Portis and the First Lady at the White House as well. Remember, Micron Technology will announce a $1 billion investment in India. That will uh, come in the joint statement that will be issued by both leaders later this week. There will be a government-to-government -government deal on jet engines, which is a, a multi-billion dollar deal. And there will also be a $3 billion deal for acquisition of 31 Predator drones, which will also be there in the joint statement. We see this defining relationship as a unique connection between the world's oldest and largest democracies with a special obligation now to demonstrate that our governments can deliver for. The most important priority is Essentially, it is oriented towards the development of the people. Defense remains an area of mutual cooperation. We as Honeywell has interest in that, so we'll certainly support uh, what both governments want to propose forward. It's a matter of pride for all of us simply because both countries can learn a lot from each other. In fact, America can learn so much from India. <laughs> Well, speaking of the Prime Minister's uh, visit to the United States, sources have told CNBC TV18 that the U.S. government wants India to join the trade pillar of the Indo-Pacific framework. This is a 14-nation grouping 
largely aimed at countering China's trade influence. Abhimanyu Sharma now joins us with more details. Abhimanyu. PM Modi is slated to hold talks with U.S. President Joe Biden on improving trade ties, deepening tech and defense cooperation, as well as on the future of the Indo-Pacific economic framework. The U.S. wants India to join the trade pillar of the 14-nation bloc IPEF and wants to conclude negotiations on all pillars by the end of 2023. While India remains open to examining proposals by the U.S. on IPEF's trade pillar, experts say that India has been reluctant to join the IPEF trade pillar in order to protect local industry and livelihoods in the agriculture cultural sector. The trade pillar includes areas like e-commerce, where India's policy space-oriented position could be at variance with other partners, and inclusion of non-trade issues like labor and environment could be in conflict with India's long-standing developing country position. India has already joined three pillars of IPEF on supply chains, clean economy, and fair economy. Public Sector Life Insurer, LIC, held non-deal roadshows in the United States. The event saw DPAM Secretary and the management interact with global investors. Officials say roadshows are scheduled in Singapore, UK and Hong Kong. A quick look at more headlines. 20 SIDIPs from 15 drug makers in India and Indonesia have been flagged by the WHO for allegedly containing toxic substances. The WHO spokesperson refused to reveal the names of the manufacturers, citing ongoing investigations. The centre has appointed Swaminathan Janaki Raman as the Deputy Governor of the RBI for three years. Janaki Raman is currently the Managing Director of the State Bank of India and he will succeed Mahesh Kumar Jain, whose tenure ends on June 22nd. The Reserve Bank of India has issued a clarification after its circular on compromise settlement with willful defaulters kicked up a storm. Ritu Singh is joining us now with more details. Ritu, what was the controversy and how is the RBI responding to it? Well, earlier this month, RBI had come out with a circular on compromise settlements with borrowers, which included willful defaulters and fraudulent accounts. And that was very much in the center of a storm because you had bank unions writing an open letter to RBI asking it to withdraw the circular because it was disincentivizing the good borrowers. You had political leaders like Jairam Ramesh questioning RBI's motives behind introducing such a levy uh, for what are clearly willful defaulters and fraudulent accounts. And now, therefore, RBI has come out with a clarification of sorts through an FAQ where it clarifies that these measures in no way dilute the penal measures that are already in place for willful defaulters and fraudulent accounts. Importantly, RBI clarifies that these are not new regulatory instructions and such practices have already been in place for at least 15 years now. All RBI is doing is tightening these provisions and ensuring more transparency. So RBI clarifies that the penal measures which include, you know, if you're a willful defaulter or a fraudulent account, you can't set up a new company for five years until you've been declassified as a uh, willful defaulter or you cannot avail any fresh loans while you attack that. You can only get a loan after five years of repaying the entire fraudulent account and so on. So it says all this is very much applicable when compromise settlements are reached with such borrowers. The idea behind introducing the guidelines was to just ensure that there is a recovery medium for banks because, uh, you know, litigation and other related delays cause erosion in the value of the asset and therefore this provides an avenue for banks to be able to reach a settlement even when uh, you know criminal other proceedings are underway and RBI says that there are enough safeguards in the policy to ensure there's no misuse and the criminal proceedings anyway ensure that miscreants do not grow scot-free all this is doing is including more transparency and even uh, you know other regulated entities like cooperative banks which earlier did not have this provision to ensure a more meaningful recovery Right, Ritu, thanks a lot for that. Now, sources say that insurance regulator, the IRDAI, has moved the Supreme Court challenging the Securities Appellate Tribunal's order in Sahara India Life Insurance case. Remember, the SAT had stayed IRDAI's order directing the transfer of policy liabilities along with the assets of Sahara Group firm to SBI Life Insurance Company. IIFL Securities will move the Securities Appellate Tribunal against the market regulator order that banned the broking house from onboarding new clients for two years for alleged misutilization of client funds. The order, however, does not affect the company's existing business with the existing clients. 
Competition watchdog CCI has approved the acquisition of additional stake by HDFC in HDFC Life and HDFC Ergo. As of the 31st of March, HDFC had around 48.65% stake in its life insurance arm. With this deal, the HDFC shareholding will cross 50% in both HDFC Life and HDFC Ergo. Shares of HDFC AMC surged by over 7% after Aberdeen Investment Management sold more than 2 crore shares, which is equivalent to 10.2% equity. Now, the shares were sold at over 1,800 rupees per share, which was at a 5% discount to the stock's closing price. The total value of the block deal was a little more than 4,000 crore rupees. IT giant Wipro has announced that the company will kickstart its 12,000 crore rupees share buyback on June 22nd and close on June 29th. The company has planned to buy back around 27 crore shares, this equivalent to nearly 5% of the total paid-up equity share capital of the company. Indigo has placed an order for 500 Airbus planes, A320 Neo family aircraft to be specific. This is the largest ever purchase by an airline in one go. The Interglobe Aviation stock hit a lifetime high today. Civil Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya said that the Indigo order book testimony to the potential of Indian civil aviation sector. This latest order by one of our foremost carriers, Indigo, order of 500 aircraft with Airbus industry, talks of the potential of civil aviation in the country, talks of the unprecedented growth that this sector has experienced over the last nine years, and also talks of the potential that this sector holds. Well, staying with the issue, CNBC's Phil Lebeau reports from Paris on the significance of this order for Airbus and what it means for the aviation landscape. It was expected, in fact, it was reported a few weeks ago that Indigo was considering this order. So the fact that it was finalized uh, yesterday, announced yesterday, not a huge surprise. And it speaks to the market that we're in right now. By the way, while that is dominating the headlines, there's lots of other smaller orders that come in just within the last few minutes. Philippine Airlines ordering nine Airbus A350s. Is that going to move the needle? No, but it does add to the backlog at Airbus. And you see the same thing at Boeing. You take a look at their backlogs right now. They stretch well beyond 2030. They are close to a record high. They're not quite there, but they're getting close. They're within a couple of air, hundred aircraft each. And as I mentioned, they are near record highs. The frustration for the airlines is that while the backlogs are big, the production is not yet there in terms of delivering more airplanes. Well, with that, it's time now for a short break. But coming up, Union government steps in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. More details when we come back. MG Cluster Blackstone. Drive unstoppable. Loan, loan, loan. Arre jisko dekho de rahe hai loan, loan, loan. Aur isko usko sab ko chahiye loan, loan, loan. Jo ghar lena ho, le le loan, le le loan. Do loan lena ho, le le loan, le le loan. Business bada na ho. तो बोल कई छुपी शर्तों का झोल अरे स्टॉप अब गोल गोल को छोड़ सुन सीधी बात के बोल अब हर सपना होगा पूरा जो तेरा है अधूरा और आईआईएफएल फाइनेंस में है मेरा भरोसा पूरा गोल से लेकर बिजनेस पर्सनल से लेकर होम हर जरूरत को मिलेगा लोन तो हुआ ना यही सही लोन आईआईएफएल फाइनेंस करता है 
सीधी बात How do you start an iconic movement? Mannerism would say it's all about refinement and richness of invention. Classicism would say it's all about form and craftsmanship. Impressionism might answer It's all about capturing the magic of every single moment. While surrealism would find all of this quite well surprising. After all, it's about creating the icon of a new movement. Welcome to forwardism. The new BMW i7 and the new BMW 7. Welcome back. Here's a quick look at the national headlines that we're tracking this evening. The situation in ethnic violence marred Manipur remains tense. The Supreme Court has refused urgent hearing on a plea seeking army protection for Kuki tribals. The court has said that this is a purely law and order situation and that it hopes that courts will not be asked to deploy the army or central security forces. Union government has stepped in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Majority of these deaths were in the Balia district of Uttar Pradesh. The Union Health Minister Mansukh Manviya said that a five member expert team will be visiting the worst affected states. हमने दो तीन महत्वपूर्ण निर्णय किया है जिस राज्य में हीट वेव चल रहा है और हीट स्ट्रोक की घटना घटित हुई है ये राज्य में राज्य को सहयोग करने के लिए मार्गदर्शन देने के लिए भारत सरकार की ओर से एक डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट आईएमडी और हेल्थ मिनिस्टर के उच्च अधिकारियों की टीम जाएगी और राज्य सरकार को सहयोग करेगी Well as things stand Bihar and Uttar Pradesh have seen over 100 deaths in the third week of June relatives blame heat stroke for these deaths but both the state governments are not officially admitting heat stroke as the cause of all these deaths CNBC TV 18 Santhya Gora reports that while the UP government has formed an expert committee to look at these deaths experts are still blaming soaring temperatures This is Balia District Hospital in UP. It has a capacity of over 250 beds and every bed has been occupied through the second and third weeks of June. In the third week of June alone 68 deaths have been reported from the region. UP as a whole has reported around 100 deaths and Bihar has reported 14 deaths. But the cause of death is being hotly contested. Relatives of the deceased blame heat stroke but the states have refused to accept this as the cause of death. Officials say the deaths could be due to other causes including underlying or existing conditions. हमने आपके साथ पूरे इसका वार्ड का आप हमारे साथ साथ रहे यहां ऐसा कोई आइसोलेटेड हीट स्ट्रोक का मरीज तो है नहीं आप भी देख रहे हैं कि ज्यादातर लोग वृद्ध हैं हां किसी को जो है सांस की दिक्कत है कोई लंबे समय से बीमार है तो यह कहना कि साहब हीट स्ट्रोक से हो रही है मौतें या हीट स्ट्रोक के पेशेंट आ रहे हैं तो एक्सक्लूसिव हीट स्ट्रोक के तो पेशेंट हमें नहीं है यहां नहीं मिले हैं बट द फैमिलीज ऑफ पीपल हु हैव बीन एडमिटेड इंसिस्ट दैट द पेशेंट्स आर डिस्प्लेइंग हीट स्ट्रोक लाइक सिम्टम्स उल्टी हुआ है उल्टी के बाद लकड़िया गए आए तो दर्द हो रहा सीना में अब अभी तुरंत मोबाइल देख रहा था अब मोबाइल देखते गए उल्टी करने उल्टी कर तो बीवी के गोदी में लकड़िया गए आए एकदम इधर दर्द कर रहा है अभी मोबाइल पर देख रहा है महसूस हो रहा है लू का मैटर एंड इज लुकिंग इन टू अदर पॉसिबल कॉजेज फॉर बोथ ऑन गोइंग एलिमेंट्स एंड डेथ 
Officials also say that Balia District Hospital has the facilities needed to handle the situation, but there are reports that the hospital is facing a shortage of even basic medical equipment like stretchers. Some local residents claim that the hospital installed coolers and air conditioners only after recent deaths turned the spotlight on it. Widespread power outages due to a prolonged summer have also been a problem. कुछ गांव वालों की अपनी भी समस्याएं थीं जैसे ट्रांसफार्मर फूका है वहां बीस इक्कीस दिन हो गए अभी तक बदला नहीं गया एक एक तिहाई गांव में बिजली नहीं है Experts say a delayed monsoon has pushed temperatures between 3 and 5 degrees Celsius higher than normal in many states including UP, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. They say that normally cooler weather due to the rains makes it easier to carry out outdoor activities like sowing and preparing the fields, but this year these activities have become a little more dangerous especially when accompanied with a surge in humidity. combination of uh, heat and humidity it's a deadly combination okay dry heat uh, generally doesn't kill you but then the combination of uh, dry heat along with the humidity that raises the discomfort level okay uh, 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 that's what is happening here the monsoon though have not reached but it is just around the corner means it has touched sub himalayan west bengal it's a little little uh, uh, shot of uh, west bengal state of west bengal but then in humidity levels are definitely high so along with these temperatures which are in mid 40s and the high humidity level it's a deadly combination and that is what is uh, killing the people more than what otherwise the conditions are Some experts say poor healthcare facilities in rural areas is also adding to the problem. So public health system ko UP mein bhi majboot nahi kiya gaya hai. Dekhiye ek to doctors ki sankhya bahut kam hai. Sab centers khole gaye hain gaon mein sab up swasthya kendra. Up swasthya kendra ka ek kamre ke bahar khali sign board laga diya hai up swasthya kendra. Wahan na to compounder ki posting hoti hai na doctor ki posting hoti hai. Wo kabhi kabhi मॉनसून पिक्स अपीम एज इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू डू इन जुलाई इन मुंबई सांतिया गोरा And well, speaking of the heat, auto manufacturers will now have to install air conditioners inside truck drivers' cabins from 2025 onwards. Speaking at an auto industry event, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari said that there is a need to improve the working conditions of truck drivers, and that this move will be a bid to improve their working environment. When I was Prime Minister, I was told that in the 43, 44, 47 degree temperature, the driver's condition is very bad. तो मैं एयर कंडीशन केबिन के बारे में बहुत आग्रह था पर इसके कॉस्ट बढ़ेगी ऐसा कहकर कुछ लोगों ने काफी विरोध किया पर भी आज मैं यहां आने के पहले मैंने वो फाइल पर साइन कर दी है कि इसके बाद ट्रक की जो ड्राइवर की केबिन होगी वो एसी होगी and well with that it's a wrap on this edition of india business uh thank you so much for watching news and updates continue right here on cnbc tv 18 दुनिया में